kind of like a, a jinx. Uh, the, the whole, in uh, the sports, the whole lot of guys have been great at 37, 38, 39. When they turn 40, something like Mike Boy, Wilson Wegwa, uh, John Walker. Uh, some, some various things happen. Yes. Why, why, why are you the exception there? Just, you know, working so hard. And also, I don't want to believe also that, you know, when I'm turning 40, my performance is going to be this way. So I'm not going to say, okay, last year I ran 13.06. So this year, because I'm 40, it's going to drop by 12 seconds or whatever, and I'm now going to be running 13.30, yeah. something like that. Yeah. It, I don't believe it, and I don't want to believe that, but I, as long as I'm still training like the year before, I should be able to perform like that last year. So, for example, if next year in 2016, I'm healthy enough and I can still train hard, I should be able to run as fast as 2015. So I just want to make sure that I put myself in a situation whereby I believe, first of all, that I can do the best training that I've ever done. And I want to be able to perform as good as I've been able to perform before. Right. And so it is very a mental state and also how you take care of yourself, right. how you train. It's like, like, uh, everything together. Yes. Yeah, it was even a, even a jinx for Amy because at 40 he was hurt. He, his record came at 41. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, so it suddenly I think that is, it, it is individual thing, so it's how you want it, yeah. and for me, I want to see myself yeah. running all in or next year, and not just run, I want to see if I can still medal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of those things that I'm not then cutting myself to say, okay, when I'm 41 next year, I'm not even going to make that team. No, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying that. Yeah. I want to make the team, right. and I'm going to work so hard to make sure that my training is going to enable me to do that. Yeah. Has anybody ever run in the Olympics, uh, other than like marathon, as, as 40 or over? I don't know, and maybe not. Well, maybe not. And I'd be happy to be yeah. uh, doing I, it. I know some mar marathon is another in other my people. Olympic, yes. Yeah. Right. There's one English guy, I forgot his name. He's the only guy to break four minutes outdoors. It's uh, Anthony Whiteman. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to break the outdoor record too? Uh, his record is 3.58 for the, uh, for the mile, and I think at 3.42 for the uh, 1,500, 1500 meters. So yeah. those are going to be yeah, things yeah, that do, I'm Do you know happy. him? Uh, I know him. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, and he's yeah, a very yeah. nice guy. Yeah. I ran with him back in the day. And yeah, yeah. Not, not too many Americans in, in know him. He's, 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 there's a great meet in Lyon, France this, this summer. You know that? Yeah. The World Masters Championship in Lyon. You know, the World Masters are very big need also. But that guy, it, it doesn't attract guys as serious as you. Would you ever run an actual ma Masters race? Um, I, I say no, not now, while I'm still can yeah. go to World Championship like in a you know, the it, normal track it, and field. It, it, if you just went to it, you can make great headlines everywhere. You could really b build that meet up. And say but you know what though, it's also an event that also needs some, it, it, it needs people to, to understand that, you know what though, Masters, World Championships and events are also important. And so for me, I'm not going to say, oh, I will never take part in those. I would love to take part in those. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is now I'm still focusing on running Seriously. In, yeah. seriously yeah. in in the like yeah. open water championships in the, in, instead of the masters only but i would like to actually get in there so that actually we can yeah. even create uh, uh, more uh, awareness that yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, the uh, masters yeah. events championships also matter yeah. can you talk about your relationship with centro and uh um, i guess what you guys mean to each other or how you guys push each other along you know what though he's the kind of guy that really he's a good runner and he's the guy that I've always seen him, you know, when he was, you know, in Oregon, running as hard as possible. And then we get into the 1500 together or the mile, and this young guy is just right there wearing the University of Oregon uniform. And he was like, you know, running as hard as possible, you know, winning the races. And so this is the guy that I knew that, you know, he was going to be the best professional. And of course, it's not surprising. He comes from the family with the talent. And, you know, his dad was a great professional as well. So him now, he's a gentleman. And I like him the way he's dedicated, the way he trains with his coach, and the way he approaches races. You know, he's not one of those guys that you can see him with a lot of nervousness or anything like that. He can still compose himself. He can crack jokes and you can tell those are the people that would 
really succeed and you know what Matt Centrowitz has succeeded already and he's still going to have a lot of success in, in, in future. A friendship but respectful competitors and uh, yes. yes. You know he's he's a tough competitor. He's younger than me. He ran two sixteen the other day and you know what I'm thinking to myself, wow, that is a tough race to run. And so I'm be lining up with Matt and a few other guys. It's going to be it's going to be tough, you know. I know I'm, I'll be run, running with Lawi as well. And those guys, every time when I'm thinking about the race like this, I'm thinking about them suddenly in my head. Now he said someday he'd like to fill your shoes as a, an ambassador and a, a well-rounded, you know, athlete and individual in the sport. What does that mean to you? It means a lot. Like I really appreciate that, and it's something that also that is what, how I've lived my life. And I know guys like Matt Central, which they are going to really be the greatest professionals, whether they are still running or even after. And so this is this is something to hear, something great to hear, and it really means that you know these guys look at look look up to me as a role model, and they want to do things the right way, the way that's supposed to be done, and be serious and do everything. The, I mean, you know, the way you want to succeed in your life. And so I'm I'm glad you know he. He, he, he talked about that way in terms of me. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Uh, 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 your race last week in Boston, do you think you can still medal in the 5,000 this year? It is possible. But if you look at how I started my first three races of the outdoor season in 2014, you know, people would think, oh, maybe he cannot. But for me, it was the worst one. But when I trained hard, when I was in Germany, and I refocus again. I was able to run 13:06. Well, in a championship race, if I was to run at 13:13 13, 13 or even 13:10, would win a championship. So I'm still within reach, uh, but it suddenly it's not getting easier. But I'm, I'm, you know, whenever I get into a situation like that, I would like to put myself in a better situation, uh, in a winning situation or position, and run a tough race in order for me to actually get that kind of uh, position. So I still want myself to be able to win championships and that's suddenly my focus as we go in 2015 all the way to 2016. Do you think that the slower pace, you know, winning time maybe in the 13, 30s or 40s, does that favor you? It, it suddenly does, but at the same time, you have to understand also, everybody in that event, I mean, when you're running at 13, 30, it's not stretching the tough guys as much. It's going to be towing them anyways, the same way it does it feels for me. And so when we start starting to run hard in terms of that last one mile, everybody will still be fresh. So it's a matter of who is going to be strong enough, fast enough to close as hard as possible that last quarter. So the, some guys like Mo Farah, some Kalen Rapp, the guys like Kalen Rapp, or some other Kenyan or Ethiopian can actually close as hard as possible. So it doesn't really get easier. But sometimes it's luck, sometimes it's the strategy that I use in order for me to enable me to maybe get ahead of these guys in a situation like that.